Dearish Pandey, thanks for being at the FFE event here today. There's around 200 organizations, nonprofit organizations in the Bay Area. What makes FFE so special? Um, first of all, thank you for the opportunity. And, um, and I feel like the more I talk to the students and the alums, the more I feel uh, like there is a lot of focus on attention to detail. It's not just about giving money to them, it's also really the duty of care. Uh, like the way they dealt with these students during COVID, the way they trained them uh, during these uh, interview sessions and soft skills. And there's a lot of other stuff that goes on at FFE, which is beyond just giving money to students. Because money is uh, necessary, but not a sufficient condition for uh, their upliftment. Speaking of all the other skills that come along, like right, the soft skills, as an entrepreneur yourself, I was actually telling a few of my tech friends that I was going to be meeting you today. Nutanix chapter is closed for you. What is next in the books? Uh, in many ways, uh, I've opened a new chapter, uh, a new book in some sense. It's called DevRev. Uh, it's a SaaS company in business software. A lot of lessons from Nutanix that I'm trying to apply to this new company. Uh, a lot of uh, how do you really take customer love to the next level? You know, we were really good at customer with customers at Nutanix. Our net promoter score was above above 90 for like seven years. And the idea of DevRev is really to take that and make that into software. Like, what does it really mean to codify everything we did at Nutanix into pure software? So we'll see where things go. We've raised uh, about uh, 70 million dollars uh, in probably the Valley's largest seed round. Again, money is not nece is, uh, necessary, but not a sufficient condition for success. So really focused on uh, learning from customers and really making this something meaningful. Well, congratulations on the next chapter. Um, one of the things you had mentioned that you're taking lessons from Nutanix and applying them at DevRev. So if we can get on like few lessons, what are they? Because for an entrepreneur crowd, I'm sure they would get a, love to get a tip from you. Well, I think one of the biggest ones which I have to take away from Nutanix was really building something for customers. And um, we did it with a lot of people, like really good people, with a lot of passion, great product, and a really good customer support. But if you take it to the next level of automating things and using machine learning and using AI for a lot of uh, what people actually do in the world of customer support engineering, customer success engineering, the goal is to really make it so simple that any small company can actually just recreate the magic that we had back at Nutanix itself. And that's the first lesson. Uh, I think the couple others one were more around continuous funding. You know, one of the things that we did at Nutanix was to really raise money once a year. And that's the old model of doing things. You know, it's really about doing things in a waterfall way where once a year or once in two years you go and raise money. But now with the blockchain and what you could actually do with friends and family, you know, you could do continuous funding, you know, just like developers appreciated uh, the agile way of writing code. I mean, there was continuous integration, continuous um, deployment. Now there's a notion of continuous funding where every month you can go and raise some money. So we go raise uh, a million a month, you know, and it's because they're friends and family, the people who will eventually use a product as well, who want to really be investing early. So we are building an order book of sorts, you know, at some point if you were to succeed as a company, these are the same people who probably will take us IPO as well, you know. So that's the next uh, lesson and I think the last one is how do you really uh, continue to, you know, really double down on design. We've done a really good job of design at our last company and, uh, but we started late. We were like, uh, in the fourth year we really started double down on design. Here, you know, in terms of design of the product, even the organization, like going to India early, going to Eastern Europe early. You know, we've done some things around organizational design as well, which hopefully will stretch the dollar further in. Yeah. Um, how important, because you had mentioned earlier about customer love, investment in human capital for an organization. Can we take a minute to talk about how important it is to invest in your team members and human capital? I mean, uh, it's a cliche, but as you know, uh, there's a lot of quiet resignations going on. People calling it like silent quitting and giving different names right the now. Great resignation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we, on the other hand, I mean, we saw this even at a last company where we didn't have attrition at, in Bangalore, for example, you know, and everybody used to complain about Bangalore's market and how frothy it was. 
is because we respected people and we valued their purpose. You know, we gave them really good things to work on because money again is is a part of it. You know, you want to pay people well and you want them to create generational wealth with equity, but they also need to be respected every day. And, and I think we looked at them as first among equals, you know, and I think that's the important piece of the puzzle. And the people come to work not just for a job, if you want to have them just look at it as a job, they'll basically quit every couple of years. You know, but if you have them really have that founders mentality, you know, that owners mindset, you know, they'll work with you for the customer for a long, long time. You know, people have desire. They have desire to grow personally in their career, but there is a time when you get just you get stuck. How do you level up? How do you get past that point? You know, uh, I use the word learning a lot, um, and a lot of it is reading, a lot of it is listening, and um, writing as well, you know. Um, and there's a writer's block, there's a reader's block in all of us. Uh, we feel like we're done with learning. I mean, I was talking to Amit Sinha, who is another uh, guest here. He's a president at Zscaler. And the co-founder and CEO at Zscaler, you know, Jay Chaudhary is 63 and is still learning, you know, and is, uh, look at his energy, the level, level of energy that he brings to the table. And so I look up to people like him and Vinod Khosla and Bill Gates and, I mean, even Warren Buffett's, I mean, I know again it's uh, cliche to talk about these people, but Warren Buffett at 90 has more energy than many, one of, many of us, you know, and he 10 x his wealth from 65 onwards, so between 65 years and 90 years of age, he 10 x uh, Berkshire Hathaway's uh, overall assets, you know. I look at Bill Gates, I look at Vinod, I learn a lot from Vinod. He's an investor in our company again, second time. But the level of energy he brings to the table, the amount of, I mean, this childlike mindset that he has, I think these are the kind of things that really get me uh, going every day. One final question. It's Sunday, and you know what that means? Sunday night football. So you have to answer this truthfully. Mr. Pandey, are you a 49er faithful? I am because of my son. Okay. Uh, he is at Harker and he plays a ton of football and he'd like to be uh, one of those footballers later in life, so we'll see. Okay. <laughs>